We've talked a lot about cells in general, but what I thought I would do in this video is focus on plant cells. And in particular, focus on the cell walls of plant cells. So this right over here, this is a drawing of a plant cell. And the thing that might jump out at you immediately is instead of drawing it as just kind of a, a, a roundish shape like that, the way I've drawn a lot of other cells, I've drawn this as kind of a cubic structure, a rectangular prism. And that's because plant cells can have a structure like that. And so the next question is, well, what gives them that shape? What allows them to, to form that kind of cubic rectangular prism shape? And the answer is, it's the cell wall. So that's the cell, cell wall. So let's make sure we can orient ourselves properly in this picture. So clearly, if I, was, if I didn't have this cutout, all I would be seeing is the outside. All I would be seeing is the cell wall. But we've cut it out, and we can see the different layers. We have the cell wall on the outside. Right below that, right below that, we have the cellular membrane or the plasma membrane. So that's the cell, cellular, cellular membrane, cellular membrane, right under that. And then under that, the cellular membrane is, control, is, is containing the cytoplasm. And inside of the cytoplasm, we have all sorts of things. This big thing that is taking up a lot of the volume inside of this plant cell, that's a vacuole, which we have described in other, in other, in other videos, vacuole. And it's a combination of this internal pressure, things like the vacuole and just frankly the pressure from, from all of the fluid inside the cell pushing outwards, plus the cell wall kind of holding it all in, that's what gives plants their structure. That's why a plant is able to grow and be, a plant is able to grow and be upright. So that's my drawing of a, of a plant. I actually have a plant in my room that I'm looking at right now, and it's able to grow and be upright. And so you have the cell wall, you have the cellular membrane, you have the other organelles. I have some chloroplasts here, key for photosynthesis. I have my, our good friend's mitochondria. We have our nuclear membrane, or I should say this yellow thing is the inner nuclear membrane, has the DNA inside. Then you have the endoplasmic reticulum, kind of containing that. The rough ER containing the ribos or having the ribosomes on the membrane. The smooth ER not having the ribosomes. Golgi apparatus, so that's a little bit of a review. But our focus here is on the cell wall. So let's go Go back to that. So if we zoom in on this, if we zoom in on the cell wall right over here, we can look at we can look at this diagram. And over here, it might be a little bit surprising to you because when I've always imagined a a, a wall, a cell wall, I imagine something like a brick wall, something that's impenetrable. But this drawing shows us something different. And just to be clear, what's going on here? So this is our cellular membrane. So I already wrote cellular membrane. So right over here, I have my lipid bilayer. And then right on top of that, I have the cell wall. But you see, it isn't just a thick, like a brick wall, something that's impenetrable. You see, you have all of these polysaccharide fibers running across it. So you have things like cellulose, uh, which we saw as a, a polymer of glucose arranged in a certain way. Hemicellulose, which has uh, different types of monomers associated with it. We have pectin, which is another polysaccharide. And all of these things, you've actually probably eaten, if not today, probably in the last week. When we talk about fiber in your diet, Diet, you're talking about things like the cellulose and the pectin, things that your body can't digest. But when you eat a plant, you're getting it because you're eating their cell walls. And it does cool things, like slows the absorption of glucose in your intestines. It absorbs water, so uh, I guess you could say things pass a little bit easier. But just to see, but the, the key thing here is this isn't a wall. This actually allows, or it is a wall. It's officially the cell wall. But it's not a thick, it's not an impenetrable wall like you might associate the wall of, of the room that you're in. You can see that it has space for small molecules to flow. And it's really more like a mesh or like a fabric. And so the cellular membrane actually has access to this this to the fluid and to the molecules that are between the cells. And so just to be clear what we're looking at, this layer right over here, that's the cellular membrane, that's the lipid bilayer. This right over here, this is the cell wall. Do that in a different color. That is the that is the cell wall. And then right above the cell wall, that's the space between the cells, which we call the middle lamella. So the space between the cells we call the middle lamella. So this also is, this right over here is also the middle lamella. 
So all of that is interesting, but you might say, okay, well, how hard is a cell? I get that it's a mesh, but you know, clearly the cells are able, to, uh, or the plants are able to stand up, right? Is that because the, the cell wall provides all of that rigidity? And the answer is kind of. The cell wall is like this mesh; it helps these cells have their shape. But if you stop watering a plant, you're going to see it. You're going to see it kind of. Wilt over, and that's because part of that that its ability to stand up is from the internal pressure of the cells, but also part of its shape is the actual cell wall. Now, some of you might say, "Well, I've seen plants that are much, much more rigid than this plant you've just drawn. What about things like trees? What about wood? Wood seems very rigid. In fact, so rigid that we can build actual walls out of wood." And the answer there is these more mature plants. Actually, once the the cell has stopped growing and you have your cell wall. More layers of cellulose and other molecules can be built to form what's called a secondary cell wall. So this could be viewed as a primary cell wall, and then a thicker secondary cell wall could be built, which gives a much, much, much more rigidity. And so when you look at wood, what gives wood its structure, even if you were to take out all of the water, even if you were to dehydrate the wood, it's still going to have its rigidity because the cellulose layers and the other molecules are so thick that it's able to have its rigid form. Now the last thing I want to talk about, we've already seen that the cellular membrane has access to the, the the molecules floating around between between cells, but there's actually also direct tunnels between adjacent plant cells. And those direct tunnels I've drawn here on this outside of the cell wall is these little yellow circles. These are plasmodesmata. Plasmo. These are plasmodesmata, and to get a better understanding of what they're like, imagine this is one cell. So I write here cell one, and let's say this is cell two. Cell two right over here, and have a cross section. You see the plasmo, you see the plasmodesmata are these tunnels that form between not just the the membrane and the cell wall, it, it, and the plasma. <laughs> It, it forms between the two cells, and so you can actually have a flow of cytosol and small molecules directly. Directly between these two cells, and if you want to get a little bit more involved in the structure, you have this kind of smooth endoplasmic reticulum pipe going through it. But I want to make it very clear, because a lot of times when you study biology, it's all explained. It seems all neat and clean in a textbook, but people are still studying exactly why do we have these things? Why are they? Why why are they necessary? What gets transported across these things, and how are they able to transport it? Under what conditions are they? So all of these areas, when you were to kind of dig one layer deeper. Than frankly, I'm talking about. You're getting into an area of active research. So anyway, hopefully this whole thing gives you a little bit more appreciation for the wood around you, the plants, the house plants around you,、uh, and, and even the salad that you might have for lunch.